Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video today, I am going to be explaining how you can download and set up the Citra emulator. Now what the Citra emulator does is it lets you emulate 3DS games, so you can essentially play 3DS games on any Windows PC. Now keep in mind, this will also work for Mac and Linux, however the instructions may be slightly different, however you can still follow my tutorial and get a rough idea on how to use the application itself. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is open a web browser of your choice, so I'm just going to use Google Chrome. Now from here we want to go to the Citra emulator, so I'm just going to type Citra 3DS. Now you can see their links first, and it's purple because I have opened this website before, it's just Citra, and then a little dash, mu.org. So I'm going to open the website, and as you can see it, the download button is right here. Now this website may change in the future, however you should still be able to navigate to the download button. So when I go to the download, it auto detects my platform, which you can tell is Windows. However, it may change to Mac or Linux, depending on what operating system you're using. This is okay for me, so I'm just gonna press download for Windows X64. As you can see, it's now downloading, and I'll cut to when this is done. It's finished now, so now I just need to open the executable file. So I'm just gonna press the little arrow and press open. However, you can go to your downloads folder and open it from there. As you can see, I've been welcomed to the Citra Setup Wizard, so I'm going to walk you through the whole thing so you don't get stuck. So I'm just going to press Next. So as you can see, it's telling me to specify where I want to install Citra. So I'm just going to leave it in my App Data folder. So if that's okay for you too, just press Next. Okay, so there's two components to Citra. There's the Nightly Build, or the Canary. Now the Canary is helpful because it's an up-to-date version of Citra. However, it's still being tested, so you may have some issues. I recommend downloading both just to have it, as there's no harm, unless you need the storage. If you are ever having issues with the nightly build, it might be helpful to try the canary build, because it may have a fix. So I'm just going to press next. So as you can see, the terms of service is right here, so you're going to have to read this through yourself. I accept it, however, so you can just check I accept the licenses. And then just press next again. Now from here we need to select where in the start menu you'd like to have the program shortcuts. I'm just going to use this as I don't really use shortcuts, so I'm just going to press next. However, if you'd like to put it in somewhere else, you can select it yourself. As you can see, Citra is now ready to install. My installation will use 221 megabytes. However, if I didn't get the canary, it may use less. And as updates happen in the future, it may be slightly different. So now all I have to do is press install. Now this tip might take a while, so I'm going to cut to when it's done. So as you can see, this took me about a minute or two. It says Citra is completed. So now we just need to open the application and get our ROMs installed. Now to open our application, you can find it inside your program files. However, I'm just going to press the Windows key and type in Citra. As you can see, the nightly build appears. I can use the canary build, however, I'm going to stick for with nightly for this tutorial. So I'm just going to press open. It's going to ask if they'd like to collect an anonymous data. So you can do this if you want, as it may help improve Citra. However, I prefer not to share this data, so I'm just going to press no. It's asking us to double click to add a ROM folder. Now basically what this is, is to put all of your game files in the one folder to keep them organized. I would recommend making a folder, so I'm just going to double press right here. Now, I just want to go to my documents, and I'm just going to make my folder here. I'm just going to name it 3DS Games for the sake of the tutorial. So select folder. And as you can see, now all of my games are going to appear in this file. However, I do not have any games in this file, so I'm going to put one in now. So as you can see, I've put the game Wipeout 2 inside my folder. Now I've obtained this from my 3DS, however you can obtain these however you want. I'm not going to be covering that in this tutorial. So as you can see, once I go back to Citra Nightly, you can see that my game is now here. The compatibility has not been tested, however if you try some other games, it may be Amber as in it works quite well, or green that it works fully. I, for some reason, decided to do a pretty unheard of game. However, if you do something like very common Nintendo games, they mostly will be green compatibility. I'm just going to go over some of the things on the top bar. If you press File, you can load a file. So that's basically bypassing your game folder and directly loading the .3ds files. A CIA file is basically used to install applications on a homebrewed 3DS. You can actually install CIA files to Citra Nightly, however I won't be covering that in this tutorial as I am going to be using .3ds files. 
If you have any amiibo files, you can load them too to use in your games. And you can directly open your Citra folder in your file explorer if you want by pressing here. Under emulation, I can't press anything right now. However, this will make a lot more sense once we're playing the game. So you can start your game, you can pause mid-game, you can load save states or save them themselves. I'm going to go into the configure section to show you some of the settings. You can go through this yourself, but the thing I'd like to focus on at the moment is the graphics. As you can see, you can use the internal resolution. However, you can make 3DS games look a lot nicer on your computer. I'm just going to go in here and make this a higher resolution. So I'm just going to make it automatically my window size. There are many different screen layouts you can use on the Citra emulator. There's default, single screen, large screen, and side by side. I can't really decide for you what you'll prefer, so I recommend using trial and error to decide what you like the most. Personally, I prefer the side by side setting. You can see if I go under the controls section, you can change the buttons used. You can see if I go under the controls section, you can see the buttons map to every button in the game. So these go to my keyboard. However, if I connected a controller, I could map them to them. I do quite recommend doing this, however, it isn't really necessary, as I've enjoyed many games by just using my keyboard and mouse. I think that's everything for the tutorial. All you have to do to open the game is just double click this file. However, I'm not going to bother doing this in this video, as I've already covered everything you need to use the Citra emulator. If this video was in any way helpful, please go down and leave a like. I can also help you in the comments if you need. Also please consider subscribing, as I'd love to hit 10,000 subscribers. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.